We got this Hashizaki ice and water dispenser. It's not working. Nothing happens. It might not even be plugged in, but I'm gonna open it up and try to figure out what's going on with it. Hopefully help you out at home. Oh, it is plugged in. Maybe that GFI breaker or uh, plug is tripped. We'll figure it out. Two screws on top to take off the top panel. Then that comes off just like that. And set that off to the side. This also slides up, I believe. It should. Turns out there's another screw right there that needs to come out. Otherwise, it just slides up and comes off of those little eyelets. Once that screw is removed, that just lifts up, slides forward. That'll give you more access to check inside the storage bin, look at your water valves, the uh, dispenser actuator, and what else are we gonna do? We're gonna take out this screw, take that off. We may end up taking off this panel, which would be screw here. There's another one that side. And then there are a couple screws hidden here and here. I have this machine all opened up and looks pretty rough in here. That is caused by a leak between the top of this evaporator and the bottom of the storage bin. Water slowly leaks out and then the calcium just builds up over time and that's what it turns into. I took all of the panels off, tried to open this up as much as possible just to give myself full access so that when I turn on the machine and try to figure out what's going on with it, it'll make it easier. I did notice that the power switch was turned off. Possibly flipping that switch will turn it back on, but it didn't. My next step is to check to see if the machine's actually getting power, which it might just be tripped, just like that. And we're gonna let this thing run and see if it starts making ice. I took off my side panel because my compressor has been running for uh, maybe five, 10 minutes. I didn't see any ice forming. I have no heat on my condenser and I have no cooling. Actually, I take that back. I have a very, very small amount of cooling at my evaporator. I'm assuming that there's something going on with a refrigerant charge, possibly a TXV. I'm not exactly sure yet. I'm gonna start by uh, taking off these caps and manipulating these lines to where I can put my gauges on and figure out what's going on with the pressures in my system. If the pressures show me, you know, one thing, then it'll lead me in a direction. If it shows me something else, it'll lead me in a different direction. So I have to check these pressures first. Kind of tough angles, but we got the gauges on there. High side, just over 150 PSI. The suction side or low side is in a slight vacuum probably running about negative five, negative 10. That leads me to believe one of a couple things, either we're low on refrigerant or my TXV is not metering properly. The way I'm gonna eliminate the possibility of it being low on charge is I'm gonna run back out to my van, get my gauge set and some 404, add some refrigerant into the system if the pressures rise, stabilize, the machine starts making ice, then I know there's a leak in the system somewhere. If not, then we're gonna suspect a bad TXV. But first things first, let's get the refrigerant and add some into the system. Gauge set all set up. I have my 
high side closed. My charging hose is open, that's closed. Everything has been purged. As you can see, I'm still in the vacuum on my section side and I'm at about 175 on the high side. Total charge in the system is less than one pound. I'm kind of leaning towards a TXV issue, TXV, but we're gonna add probably half of whatever the charge is. I think it's 14 ounces, so we're gonna add about seven ounces, see if our pressures change. If that doesn't go up, but my high side does go up, I'm gonna lean towards TXV, but if this goes up and this goes up slightly and starts making ice, then I'm gonna lean, to lean towards a charge issue. Just got done adding about seven, eight ounces of R404 suction side still in the vacuum discharge side about where it's at if i keep adding refrigerant eventually this will end up uh filling up with liquid refrigerant and the machine will shut off on high pressure so i unwrapped my txv it's super cold uh super cold here and then by the time it drops down and goes into the evaporator here, it's not really all that cold. I think that either something is sticking the TXV mostly closed or possibly that uh, TXV bulb back here has lost its charge. But either way, this is an opening to allow refrigerant to flow into the evaporator. And that's why we're not getting any ice formation so what we're going to need to do is kind of look over the rest of the machine, check out how dirty it, dirty it is, make sure all the other components are working, determine part number for this, and there's a filter dryer back there that's going to be super hard to change out, uh, determine whether or not it's worth repairing, and present the information to the customer so they can make a decision.